As time passed, they had certain pious people from amongst them. If you look at Surah Nuh, you will find the names of these pious people. Waddan, Suwa'an, Yaghuth, Ya'uq, and Nasr. These are five names mentioned in the Quran. They were pious people. Shaitan came to the, the people of that time and said, Look, these are pious people who are reminding you to do good. Now that they've died, just make a small statue. So every time you see the statue, you'll be able to remember that this person used to remind us of good and you will do the good. They saw nothing wrong in that. They created statues and each one was named after one of these pious people. And every time they came and they saw these statues, they were very happy. It reminded them to do good and they began to do good. Now shaitan is very patient. So he waited for that generation to pass. When that generation passed and people forgot why exactly they had made those statues, he went to the next generation and said, you know, your forefathers, you don't know what they used to do. They used to worship these idols. These are statues. This is what brought them goodness. And he conned them. He said, whenever they saw these idols, they worshiped the idols. So they became good people and goodness came in their direction. So shaitan says, don't you see the statue used to help them to become good. So you need to prostrate to these statues in order to become even better. So this is when shirk started. This is the first association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how the shirk starts to spread among the people after the death of Idris all the way to Nuh alayhi salam. And the shirk took over the world. That there was no one saying la ilaha illallah except Nuh. At the time of Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh was the only Muslim worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone at that time. Everyone beside Nuh is a mushrik. Everyone beside Nuh associates someone else with Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Nuh alayhi salam came. We sent Nuh to his people. So he said to them directly, O oh my people, Worship Allah alone. You have no deity besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Calling towards the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 950 years, generations, generations were coming into and leaving Nuh alayhi salam's time. Such a long time actually for da'wah. Now obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives this struggle to the prophets because the prophets can handle it. 950 years calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or people say la ilaha illallah. We sent Nuh to his people to warn his tribe and people before a severe punishment comes to them. I fear over you the punishment of that day, the great day. I am only conveying to you the messages of my own Rabb. And I am giving you advice, nasiha, sound advice I am delivering to you. So don't hold it against me. Don't call me a madman. Weigh what I am saying. And if it makes sense, and it will definitely make sense if you are ready to ponder over it, then follow it. So a few people started following him. Who? Very few. After so many years, one person. After so many years, another person. Subhanallah. What were their backgrounds? What were their positions and status in the community or in society? You will find that every single one of them, Allah describes them in the Quran, that they were people who weren't very important in the society. What do I mean by that? They weren't popular people. They weren't famous people. They weren't people who had high positions, such as the chief of a, of a tribe or the leader of a, of a, of a nation or a doctor, a PhD, or a famous singer, or a famous actor. They were merely farmers, simple people. They would call them primitive people. And when they heard the da'wah of Nuh alayhi salam, they did not hesitate to accept. They did not hesitate to accept. So when Nuh alayhi salam began to give da'wah to the others, 
who were the chiefs and the big men and the big people and the hotshots and all that, and you know? What happened? They did not want to listen. They wanted to carry on in their ways. The chiefs from amongst the people, those who had authority, those who had power, those who had wealth, those who had respect in society, they spoke. They said, you are astray. This man is astray. Don't listen to him. Nuh said, Qala Rabbi, oh my Lord, inni da'awtu qawmi layla wa nahara. Oh my Lord, I called my people during that day and night. Falam yazidhum du'a'i illa firara. And my call to them only made them run away from me. And yet he was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They followed the haughty. They followed those who had money. They followed those who had authority. They put their fingers in their ears. They don't want to listen to me. They don't want to hear what I'm calling them for. وَاسْتَخْشَوْ ثِيَابَهُمْ And they covered themselves. يعني, get away. We don't want to listen to you. وَأَصَرُوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا استكبارا. And they are very firm in denying. And they had pride. ثُمَّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُهُمْ جَهَارًا Oh Allah, then I called them in the open. I called them in the open. I called them in clothes. I called them in the day. I called them at night. I went to their houses. I went to their gatherings. I spoke to them individually. I spoke to them in groups. And they only ran away from me. 950 years, ya khwani. 950 years. They replied to him, We will not believe in you. You're a madman. You're a crazy man. And anyway, Look at who has followed you. This is in the Quran. We cannot see anyone has followed you except the, the most inferior among us in society. They just take very simple words without thinking about it. No logical, no logic to them. They just, anything you say to them, they believe it. Oh, what they're trying to say is a type that believe in fairies, in fairy tales. Put a tooth under your pillow, the next morning you'll find a coin. They were trying to say this is the type of people they were. Like children. This is how they saw them. But contrary to that, opposite to that, Allah saw them quite the opposite. He saw those ones inferior and these ones superior. Why? When the truth comes, brothers and sisters, the truth has a description. How do you know the truth from false? The truth is clear. Number one, the truth is very clear. The truth is powerful. It, can, it takes you five minutes or less to accept the truth. So these people whom they called inferior, badi ra'i, primitive minded like children, they were deliberately calling him that out of arrogance and proudiness. Why? These people, they didn't want the truth because the truth will make them equal to the farmers and to all the others. When I mean farmers, today farmers are important, but in those days when you said farmer, it means it's just primitive doesn't have any education and look at those who are following you look at them they are the worst from amongst us they've got no material standing at all nobody respects them in society they are foolish they haven't even thought before they followed you they don't even know what's about to come in their direction 950 years 950 years that's not how long he lived for he called to Allah for 950 years they said to him if you get rid of these inferior people who are primitive minded, we'll think of following you. We'll think. So what are these people actually asking you? They're not after the truth. We'll speak to you. In return, you keep those weak ones away from us. We do not accept them to be around us. I'm not going to turn these people out. I'm not going to tell them go away. They will be facing Allah too. And they'll be judged like you too. All my people who will support me. Who will stand by me if I kick these people away and Allah Azza wa Jal will want to punish me? Who will stand by me? Who will support me against Allah if I turn these people away? Who's going to stand by me? These are Allah's servants. These people have rights to listen. If I kick them out, who's going to stand by me in front of Allah Azza wa Jal? Who's going to protect me from Allah's punishment? Have a the can't you think? So they did not listen to him. So that if that's the case, we wanted to give you some respect, but you didn't listen to us, then go. He dwelled within them, calling them towards goodness for a thousand years, less 50, which means 950 years. He spoke to them, he called them. He instructed them, he tried with them. He answered all their questions. Now they started getting frustrated. Now they wanted to begin to threaten. They say, oh no, keep quiet. 
If you're not going to keep quiet, we're going to stone you to death. If you don't keep quiet, we're going to stone you. Allahu Akbar. What did Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam do? He kept on saying, Ya Allah, guide my people. Ya Allah, guide my people. Ya Allah, guide these people. He kept on saying it. He was patient. He was patient for a long, long time. وَقَالُوا مَجْنُونٌ And they called him mad. Was dujir. And they rebuked him. They swore him. They mocked at him. They tortured him. They engaged in all forms of evil. But he was still saying, Oh Allah, guide my people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said to Nuh alayhi salam, أَنَّهُ لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنْ No more of your people shall believe in you other than those who have already believed. So grieve no longer at their misdeeds. Don't, don't feel sorry for them. What does this mean? Allah told him, no one is going to believe anymore. That's it. That's it. The Hidayah is closed on these people. Subhanallah. Revelation from Allah saying to Nuh, don't waste your time anymore. Whoever you're going to call, whoever you're going to speak to, whoever you're going to preach to, no one is going to listen to you anymore. So Nuh alayhi salam, although he was so patient for many, many years, many, many years, 950 years, do you know what happened? Finally, he raised his hands. So then he made his famous dua. Oh my Lord, do not leave a single disbeliever on the face of the earth again. Don't leave him alive. If you leave them alive on the face of the earth, they will lead your servants astray. And they will not give birth to anyone except arrogant, boastful disbelievers. And do not increase the criminals and the oppressors anything but more grief. Very well. Ya yeah, Nuh, I've responded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Nuh to build an ark, a ship. I order you to go and construct an ark under, my, under our eyes and address me no further on behalf of those who have been unjust they shall be drowned in the flood. That's it. It means you've said your dua, there's no turning back. So Nuh alayhi salam was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build a ship. And alayhi salam started to build the ship with the guidance of Jibreel. Jibreel alayhi salam came down teaching Nuh how to build the ark. Allah ordered Nuh alayhi salam to go up to a mountain strange to a mountain to build the big ship <laughs> you don't build a ship under, up in the mountain where there's no water normally you build it close to the coast right and obviously there's a wisdom behind that you'll find out soon Shan. and the people of Nuh will come and mock Nuh alayhi salam and say oh Nuh did you become a carpenter after your prophet so what you're a builder now you're a carpenter we thought you're a prophet and they'll mock him and then they told him oh Nuh he built a ship in the middle of the desert over a mountain. Uh, there's something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. What? No. Now you're a, you're a carpenter. And before you were a prophet, make up your mind for crying out loud. You're a prophet. Now you're a carpenter. <laughs> we told you he's crazy. And no stayed 100 years building the ark. The people used to go into the ark of Nuh when he's not watching. And they used it as a toilet, just to go there and defecate in the ark. And there was so much defecation, feces, that it was unbearable. His people mocked him in the most ugliest and disgusting ways. The ark was huge. Some of them say it was 80 yards long. Some of them say 100. And they agree that it was at least... 30 yards high. It was made of three stories. The first story was 10 yards high, second 10 yards, and the third 10 yards high. So big, very big ship. Huge. Higher than a very high building. You know, like those skyscrapers we have in the city. Very high, very tall, very big. He covered the top as well. It was not a ship with the top open. It was covered as well, more like a submarine. 
ready to go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Nuh how to build this state of the art peace. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said about this ark, وَلَقَدْ تَرَكْنَاهَا آيَةً فَهَلْ مُدَّكِرٍ And we had left this ark, we had left this ship as a sign, a miracle to the day of judgment. And this ark till this day exists. They found a part of it in Turkey. This ark till this day stays till the day of judgment as Allah Azza wa Jal said in the Quran Kareem. Then Allah told him, so Allah says, فَإِذَا ثَارَتْ النور, When the oven floods, we said to him, carry on board your ark from every creature a pair, just two, male and a female. This is in the Quran. From every animal, male and female, and go into the ark. Every single animal and creature was boarded onto that ship. They were in the first story. In the second story, they say it was the humans. And in the third story, were for the birds to land and stay there. Allah says, فَفَتَحْنَا أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَاءٍ مُنْهَمِرٍ Allah says, And so we opened up the doors of the, of the heavens. Metaphorical words. The doors of the heavens with gushing water. Munhamir is like spilling a bucket. It wasn't just rain. It was like the water that you spill from a bucket. It wasn't drops. It was all at once. وَفَجَّرْنَا الْأَرْضَ عُيُونًا The power of Allah. And we burst, exploded the earth and made holes from every part, from mountains, from valleys, from everywhere into billions of gushing fountains. The water of the sky and the water of the earth met together on a divine command. He called upon his followers and went to the ark and in front of the ark. And Nuh went with his followers and his family and his wife. And he had four boys, four sons. Yam, Sam, Ham and Yafith. Yam disbelieved. Sam, Ham and Yafith believed. The majority say that they, did, they were on the ark with him. And Nuh had a wife beforehand, was the mother of Yam. She died before the flood and he had another wife who climbed who was the mother of Sam, Ham and Yafith who climbed aboard. And those little bits, number of people that believed with him. Nuh looked at his son Yam and he said to him, Come, come aboard with us and don't be among the people who disbelieved. What did his son reply in arrogance? He said, Dad, I'm going to go to a high mountain and it will save me from the water. What did Nuh reply? He said, Today there is no protection from the law of Allah except who he has given mercy to. As they were having the conversation, Allah says right there and then, because it was quick, وَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمَا الْمَوْجُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ Suddenly the waves intercepted between them both and took his son away and he was among the ones who drowned. Immediately Nuh turned and he said, Oh my Lord, my son is part of my family. وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقَّ And your promise is true. وَأَنْتَ أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ And you are the most wise. Allah replied immediately to him and said to him, He said, Oh no, he's not one of your family. Why? In the earlier verse, Allah said to him, I will save your family except the ones who disbelieved. So the family that I was talking about were the ones that believed, but the family of yours who disbelieved, I'm not going to save them. They're not part of it. Now it's not something to do between you and your son. This is a matter between your son and me. I gave you your son. If he wronged you, different story. He wronged me. Don't get involved. Don't dare to ask me something that you have no knowledge of. Inni a'idhuka an takun in al-jahil. I warn you, I advise you not to be among the ignorant. Qala arkabu fiha bismillahi majriha wa mursaha. Allah said to them, climb onto it and say bismillah. In the name of Allah, 
it's directed and in the name of Allah it flows it sails and Nuh alayhi salam will be in that ship and ark him and the, his believers for six months Allah azza wa jal for six months protected Nuh and his followers in the ark and then Allah azza wa jal ordered the ground to swallow the water waqila ya ardu bla'i ma'aki so the ground swallowed the water and then the flood's gone Nuh alayhi salam is in the cover he doesn't know six months under the rain water from the top water from the bottom so Nuh alayhi salam used to send bird he used to send a pigeon and every day that pigeon would come back with nothing so one day he sent the pigeon and it came back with a leaf from the from an olive tree so Nuh realized that now the water is dry, drying and then after that by a few days he sent that pigeon again he came back with mud on his feet so Nuh realized that now the water is dry and where did the ark stop? It stopped on a mountain called Judi. Mountain called Judi. And that mountain is in Turkey. What Allah says in the Quran is the truth. It landed on the mountain of Judi. And when it settled there, the ark, subhanAllah, was built on a mountain and landed on a mountain. So you hardly find an ark that high. They say, Wallahu alam. I don't know, I've heard this story several times now. <laughs> that they found the ark or pieces of the ark in Turkey somewhere. I heard this like 10, 15 years ago and it suddenly was forgotten and now they go, oh, the other day they go, they discovered it. And I'm thinking, they discovered it then or now or when? But the point is, it is still on earth and people have discovered it before. Now Allahu A'lam, if we have or haven't, maybe it's fossilized, only Allah knows. The point is, Allah said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ تَرَكْنَاهَا آيَةً Allah says, and we left the ark as a sign, as a miracle. Can anyone deny this? So at the time the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, this ark was still there and people found it and people witnessed it and people spoke about it and today they still talk about its fossils and the scientists are discovering because they know that the ark is actually still there. So it was sighted and it was seen and Allah says, those who are endued with knowledge cannot deny it. Those who read in history cannot deny it. So it was there. It doesn't mean that every single person sees it, but there are members of the human population who do see it and rediscover it and re-talk about it again and again. And then Nuh alayhi salam came out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him and those people and the rest of the animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all the followers of Nuh not to have any descendants. All the descendants stopped. All the wives were barren, except Nuh and his family. And that's why they call Nuh the second Adam. Because all the descendants go back to Nuh alayhi salam, no one else. And Nuh alayhi salam lived 350 years after, 350 years after the flood. And he was a righteous servant of Allah. He used to worship Allah Azza wa Jal constantly and he used to fast every single day except the Eid days. He used to accept the Eid days. And he passed away alayhi salam and most of the narration says he was buried in Mecca. 